What is up, everybody? It is me, Video Present 102, back with another Wattpad read aloud. Two of the day. We are reading chapters four through six and one, six or seven, depends. Of No by Moongazer527. Without further ado, after two weeks, we will get back into it. Soon after Roman took off with Virgil, I turned to look at Logan. You know, my soulmate. I feel my cheeks get warm as a heavy silence fell over us. For a short time, neither of us knew what to say. This is until Logan cleared his throat. <clears throat> so, we are soulmates, correct? I guess. I mean, isn't that the sole purpose of these tattoos? <laughs> I, get, I chuckled. The logical trait sighed. Maybe I shouldn't have shown my tattoo. Ah, oh, don't be like that, Logan. I nudged his arm with my elbow. You're the biscuit to my crofters. He smiled, showing a rare blush on his cheeks as he looked down. Thank you, Patton. No problem, Lo. I beamed, then an idea came to my mind. Let's go make some cookies. Before he could protest, I grabbed his hand and led him and led the brush blushing logical trait to the kitchen. I probably wouldn't admit it to anyone, but I did like Logan before we showed each other our tattoos. And by like, I mean really like, like, more than I like the others. And I like the others a lot, as friends, of course. But Logan, Logan has been my crush for a while. Logan slowed as we reached the kitchen. Um, pet him? What's up, Lo? I turned to face him. I've never actually baked cookies before. He looked down embarrassed. Well, that's okay, Logan, I grinned. There's always a first time for everything. Shall we get started? Logan smiled. Yes, that would be ideal. Great! I yelled, starting to pull out the necessary materials for baking. We will need a whisk, a large bowl, and a cookie sheet. I named the things as I pulled them out. Could you preheat the oven to 350 degrees low? We don't want to forget that. I chuckled as Logan shook his head, smirking. I started to gather all the ingredients, checking them off in my head, one by one, in my mind. One cup of butter, one cup of white sugar, one cup packed brown sugar, two eggs, two teaspoons vanilla extract, one teaspoon baking soda, two teaspoons hot water, a half a teaspoon salt, three cups all-purpose flour, two cups semi-sweet chocolate chips. I set the ingredients on the counter and turned to Logan. Step one is to cream together the butter, white sugar, and brown sugar. Logan straightened to his glasses. Technically, it's step two. The first step was preheating the oven. Yeah, yeah. I pushed the bowl into the teacher's arms. Here, hold this while I crack the eggs in. He blushes as our hands brush by each other. Slowly, he starts to beat the mixture while I add the water, baking soda, and salt. Logan continues to mix and I pour in the flour and chocolate chips. Logan's eyes freed and his stirring slowed. This is much more difficult than it looks. I giggled. <laughs> yeah, it usually is. I could take it now if you need a break. No, it, it's okay. It's almost ready anyway. No, 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 no. Logan's POV. Pan takes a bowl from me and he starts spooning together small heaps of cookie dough onto a baking tray, sticking it in. He sets the timer for ten minutes before turning back to face me. This was fun, the bubbly trade said. I'm glad I didn't have to bake these by myself again. I was confused. Pan didn't bake by himself? What about the others? Don't they bake with you? Pan hung his head. No, Roman is usually in the imagination or on a quest, or working on ideas. Virgil is always too worried he'll mess something up, and Deceit doesn't like chocolate chip cookies. Oh, I am sorry, Patton. I never knew. It's okay, Lo. I don't mind making them by myself. Why didn't you ever ask me? I would have gladly made chocolate chip cookies with you, I stated. Patton's cheek flared crimson. I, I, um... Well, he stammered, have you ever wanted to be a dog? I, uh, what? 
Uh, Roman gave me this spell rope from the imagination, and there was this one spell I thought that'd be really fun to try, because it turns you into a dog for 12 hours, but I never got a chance to use it because I've been too busy and- Patton! I interrupted. Her model Trey looked at me with what could be the best described as puppy dog eyes. I sighed. If you really want me to try this spell so much, I guess I will accompany you. A huge grin crept over Patton's face. He launched himself at me, wrapping his arms around my neck. Thank you, Logan! The timer beamed. Patton realized, released me to take out the cookies and place them on the cooling rack. When he finished, he grabbed my hand and pulled me towards his room. After a bit of digging, Patton brought out a big leather-bound book. Here it is! Great. Now we... Where's the smell you've been talking about? Patton flipped through the pages before stopping on one with a picture of a dog and a man. He started to recite the spell. Aha! Let my fur grow... <laughs> Let my fur grow fluffy and soft. Let my tail grow long. My pointed nose, my fur, my eyes spread wide. By the power of the forest, so mote it be. Patton looked up at me, still very much human looking. He sighed. I guess it didn't work. Maybe you just take some time, I suggested. I didn't really believe in the magic outside the imagination, but after Roman's magic glue. Anyway, I am sorry to have to leave you now, but I am have some work to do. Oh, it's fine, Patton said with a small smile. I think I'm going to get a couple of cookies. I earned some today. I followed Patton out of the room, heading over to my own. I sat down at my desk, only to feel a sudden, overwhelming exhaustion take over me. I tried to keep my eyes open, but they soon closed anyway. And when I opened them, no less than a few minutes later, I was not prepared for what I saw. No. I had turned into a Canis lumpus familiaris, or a dog in non-scientific terms, more specifically, a border collie. I didn't realize I was slipping off my own chair until I landed on the floor, the chair landing next to me with a loud crash. I woke up for the second time today with a loud crash came from the down the hall, groaning. I checked the time on my phone, then immediately slammed it back down again. He'd only been asleep for five freaking minutes. I waited to roll over and go back to sleep, but my stomach had other plans. I grumbled loudly at the lack of breakfast this morning. I stayed curled up for a couple more minutes, ignoring my stomach's complaints. What? I just had an attack. Cut me some slack. But in all honesty, the thing that really got me up was the scream. Well, it was more of a surprised yelp, but it was soon it was accompanied by a small thump. So I crawled out of the warmth of my bed, dragging a blanket along with me, and I headed out of my room to find food and see what the hell was going on. I didn't get very far when I saw the very confused prince walk out of Logan's room, rubbing his head. I heard him mumble something about dogs. Um, princey? I call out. He jumps a bit. V Verge, what are you doing up? I thought you were asleep. I shrugged, pulling off my soft purple fabric of the blanket further off my shoulders. I was hungry. A sharp yip and a surprised yell was heard from the kitchen. Then some more, angry yelling. Prince and I shared a confused look before we walked into the kitchen. When we opened the door, when we, sorry, um, we opened the door. I saw why Princey was muttering about dogs. A little minpin was chasing the seat around the kitchen while a border collie sat off to the side. The black and white dog seemed amused as he watched the whole ordeal. The seat looked up to where Princey and I was standing, trying to hide our laughter. He sent us a glare and tried to walk over to the exit, but a little orange-brown dog got under his feet. The seat fell flat on his face. I couldn't help it anymore. I burst out laughing for the first time in forever. I can do what I want. Y'all can fight me. It was just too funny to see the snake face on the ground with a tiny dog on his back. The seat grumbled, pushing the small men pin off and walking out of the room. He was talking to himself about something, but all he heard was stupid author. I shook my head, a small smile still stuck on my face. I looked up to see Princey staring at me. My smile fell. What? Princey blinked. Oh, um, um, I just never heard you laugh before. 
I blushed, a summer creeping back onto my face. I pulled my blanket over my head and walked over to the window. Rain. My favorite type of weather. I turned back to Princey. So, what's with the dogs? The princely trait shrugs. They just turned up. I chuckled. Padden would be excited. Princey smiles, shaking his head. Oh, I could only imagine what he would do. He'd probably scream and want to play with them for the rest of eternity. All too true, my friend, Princey sighed. There was a moment of silence as we watched the two mysterious dogs. Here's the picture of the dogs. Roman's POV. After a moment of silence, Virgil took his blanket off his head and threw it on the kitchen chairs, grabbing an apple. He started walking to the door that led outside the mountain palace and into the mindscape. Um, Virch, what are you doing? I asked the darkly dressed trait. I'm going outside. But it's raining. And? I had no compact for that. I simply closed my mouth and sighed running his hand over his face and somehow not ruining his makeup. Look, I love the rain, the anxious trait said. I looked up and he continued, but it hardly ever rains in the mindscape, and when it does, Penn or Logan or both stop me, so now they aren't here and I'm going to take this opportunity to sit in the rain. I was stunned by his words. I never knew you liked the rain. Yeah, well, it, it, it's calming. Virgil stuttered, rubbing the back of his neck. Even the two strange dogs looked unsure what to do. They almost looked guilty. I, um, I stammered. Would you perhaps like some company while you sit in the rain? Uh, I don't mind. Freaking video. I uh, don't mind. Virgil looked surprised that I would ask. Just be quiet, okay? I nodded quietly and dogged to catch up with him. The gloomy train. He opened the door, allowing the rain-cooled air to rush into the Mayan Palace. I'll admit, I never actually took interest in anything outside the Mayan Palace, except for the imagination. And usually, I just teleport there. So it was a surprise to me to find that we had a nice little porch wing with a porch. That we had a nice little front porch with a little bench wing. Virgil sat down on the cushion-covered wicker, causing the change to creak. He leaned back. I was closed and smiled. For a while, all that could be heard was rain drumming on the roof and munching on an apple, drowning out the breathing and a slight click of nails as the dogs came out to join us. Virgil opened one eye. Are you going to sit down, Princey? I felt a blush creep onto my face before moving to sit by the dark clad trait. The cushions were comfortable and the rain did lull me into a sense of calmness. I understand why Virgil likes it out here. I managed Virgil and closed my eyes, breathing in the fresh scent of rain. I started to push the swing, hearing a soft hum of content from the trait next to me. I completely lost track of time. Usually that only happens when I'm training or on a quest. I get all cu caught up in the action. I spent hours upon hours in the imagination. I have never lost track of time just sitting. I felt a weight on my shoulder and opened my eyes to find that Virgil had fallen asleep. At some point... It had turned into nighttime, the darkness hiding the rain away so that it only become heard. The drumming mingled with the soft snores coming from the sleeping tray. I stifled a yawn and laid down, trying not to wake Virgil. I started to think before I drifted into dreamland. Do I like Virgil in a romantic way? Is more than just a friend? No. Ooh, we get an ad. This is an ad. We're watching an ad. We're watching an ad. An ad. We're watching an ad. Last chapter we will be reading today. I woke up, laying on something warm with sunlight trying to break into my closed eyelids. It was still a bit chilly from last night's rain, but I didn't want to move. I was warm and comfortable, and the warm thing moved. It was a small movement, but it made me open my eyes nonetheless. At first, all I could see was red and white and gold. My sluggish brain tired to make sense of what I was looking at. Then I realized the warm thing that I was laying on was Princey. I felt my face turn redder than a cherry. I shot up from Princey's chest. 
bad idea. My head hit a tin bucket, filling the pink, red, and white confetti that flung all over us, knocking all the colorful contents over me in Sleeping Beauty. I sat back on the bench with a groan, my face in my knees, and rubbing the sore spot on the back of my head. I felt Princey wake up beside me, most likely from the loud clang, and a ball of confetti falling on his face. Oh, come on! I heard the juvenile voice laugh. I looked up and saw little pranks and misleading compliments crackling like an evil gremlins they are. You weren't supposed to wake up yet! I glared daggers at the older two of the three kids in the mindscape. Pranks was the eldest, being 15 years of age. Missy was the next oldest, the middle child in the sense, and he was 13. Imogee was the youngest, at 10. He mostly stayed in the imagination, or more or less controlled what went on there. Princey cleared his throat. May I ask what your original plan of this prank was? Pranks somehow managed to slow his giggling to respond to the royal trait, with only a few laps escaping. <laughs> we, we were gonna play a can you feel the love tonight and dump some confetti on you two lovebirds to wake you up? <laughs> My face grew even redder, if it was possible, at Prince's comment. Prince and I may be soulmates, but I don't like him, right? I was so caught up in my thoughts, I didn't even notice that Prince and Missy had left. Hey, Virch? Princey asked, placing a hand on my shoulder. Are you okay? I nodded, grimacing slightly. Yeah, I'm fine. Just hurts a little. Here, let me take a look. The princely trade insisted. No, no, Roman, I'm fine. But he was already praying my hands away from the back of my head. I sighed and resigned him to my fate. Princey's hand gently skimmed over the spot where my skull hit the bucket. I hissed, slamming my eyes shut. Sorry, Princey mumbled apologetically. It's fine, I managed to say between gritted teeth. Well, Princey said, standing up. There doesn't seem to be much damage, other than the brutes, of course. I turned slightly to face him. He had bits of colored paper in his usually perfect hair, and some of it stuck to his suit, which was wrinkled from sleep. Um, thanks, but you really didn't have to do that, I told him, the dis- dis prince. I know, Princey said. I just feel the need to make sure everyone is okay and protected, and when someone gets hurt- His voice trailed off. I understand, though, the feeling of not being able to do anything useful, the mental attitude of thinking you could have done something, even when it was completely out of, your, out of your control. I understand. Just then, M.G. ran up to and wrapped his arms around Princey's waist, crying into his suit. Hey, hey, what's wrong? Princey gently asked, brushing the tears from the youngest cheats. <laughs> I had a nightmare last night, and <laughs> now there's something. Jago was and it's really, really scary and pretty stuff, Roman. The ten year old sniffed. A dragon witch, you said, Princey stated. Well, that dragon witch is no match for me, no matter how big or scary. MG smiled, hugging Princey tighter and nearly screaming, Thank you! Princey chuckled. You're welcome. Now go get petted until I defeat this nonce. The young one nodded and ran inside, but not before Princey ruffled his hair. I never knew you were so good with kids, I commented, smirking. Princey jumped, seeming to forget I was there. Ah, oh, well, it's like I said before. I feel the need to protect them. So, then you're really gonna fight this dragon witch, huh? I asked. The princely tree nodded, summoning his sword. They aren't usually too difficult to deal with, although there have been one or two that caused a bit of trouble. My eyes widened, remembering something. Is that why you came back to the mine palace that one time covered in blood and half conscious? Princey shrugged. I had a bit of trouble. That's not a bit of trouble, Roman. You were out for the entire day and could barely get out of bed the next two. You scared Pat half to death. Even Logan was worried that you you wouldn't make it. And <laughs> I cut myself off, hugging into my hoodie closer to my body. There was a long silence before Princey spoke up. I'm sorry. I looked up at him. To put it simply, he looked like a mess. Pink confetti in his hair, tear-stained wrinkle suit, a huge guilty look on his face. And suddenly, Princey didn't look like Princey. I shook my head. No, I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have yelled out like that. Princey sighed. I... 
I need to go now. That dragon witch isn't going to slay itself. I could go with you, I blurted out without thinking. The other's eyes widened. N no, Virgil, it's too dangerous. I won't take that for an answer, Princey, I said. Besides, what if something happened to you again and you couldn't make it back to the mine palace? What if you get hurt, he cried. I wouldn't be able to live with myself if something happened to you out there. Then we'll protect each other, and if things start to go south, we get back, we get the hell out of there. Got it? Princey hesitated, but nodded. Fine, let's go slay a dragon witch. He snapped his fingers and teleported us to the imagination. Looming in front of us was a huge cave, probably 200 feet high. And if that wasn't intimidating enough, the dragon witch slowly stepped out into the sunlight, each step booming with power until he could see it with its terrifying glory. It was easily a hundred feet tall. Its leathery black wings bolted out in the sun. Hell no. So guys, that's what I have for today. I'm sorry it took me so long to post this. My phone's stupid. And I'm not even currently using my phone right now. I'm using my sister's tablet, which is somehow better than my phone at recording videos. But shock, shock, of course, she gets the better YouTube stuff. And she doesn't even have a channel because she's eight. And all she uses this tablet for is making JoJo Siwa wallpapers. She literally has seven different apps with JoJo Siwa wallpapers. And it's like, for one, JoJo Siwa, really? I thought you said you didn't like her. And secondly, like, you could just download a wallpaper from Google. I, I hope she knows that. So anyway, that is all for today. Please smash that like button and subscribe because I want to make it to 100 subscribers. And once I get there, I want to make it to enough so I could get paid to do YouTube so that this could become my job in a couple of years because I want YouTube to be my job. So I keep bad burning out about stuff. I should probably stop. Do your best.